Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Morning. Yeah. Okay. I'm starting. Okay. Fine. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, all of you. Uh, we are so sorry for the delay because of the connectivity issues. Okay. Now we are starting. Okay. My name is A S Narayanan. This is my name. You can call me as Nana. Okay. Hey, uh, it's okay. Nana. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Okay, good. This is going to be a training on Oracle applications. This is a functional training we are going to have. <clears throat> okay, we are going to begin with an introduction to ERP. Okay. How many guys are there totally? Uh, there's one, two, three. Three of you. Okay, fine. That's good. <clears throat> okay, we are starting it. Okay, fine. ERP. We are now going to have a small introduction to ERP and then afterwards we'll be going into inventory organization directly. Okay, fine. So to begin with, what happens? The How the evolution of ERP has taken place, we are going to see. Okay. In early 1970s, oh. 1950s to 1970s what happens the entire industry I'm sorry, one. yeah hello yeah please uh, uh, hello hello uh, can you hear me yeah okay uh, if you don't mind uh, could you go a little slow because uh, 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 I mean they're sitting behind so they can't follow so if you could go a little slow maybe you know that'll help a lot okay fine can you do that? Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The industry has uh, realized in the year 1950s to 1970s that unless and otherwise you improve production, production and productivity, if these two things are improved, then only what happens, you will be able to improve the country's prosperity the country's prosperity was dependent upon these two factors at the time the jit concept came into being this is called just in time so with this just in time what happens the industry is working here this is the industry you'll be having the raw materials which is coming in this is going out as a finished goods this is going as a finished goods and then they do not want to have any delay. No delay has to take place. So the JIT was concentrating on eliminating the wastages or at least reducing the wastages. Eliminate wastages. Once when you want to eliminate the wastages, what happens? You are going to have, there are so many wastages, industrial wastages are there. One of them we can say time. Time is wasted. You waste the time unnecessarily. <clears throat> okay. Then afterwards, what happens? Manpower is wasted. Manpower is wasted. Then material is waiting for production. Material waiting for production. This is also a wastage. Money is a wastage. Okay. The scraps. He can reduce the uh, what's called industrial waste like scraps. Okay, byproducts are not extracted. You are just letting it to the atmosphere or otherwise some other place. So you have so many such wastages which are there. So for which what happens? The JIT concept came into being. So what happened? This is the industry. With this industry in center, I am the owner of the industry. And then they started to give me some packages. This is the maintenance package. This maintenance package <coughs> started giving me a lot of good yield. Then I have a projects package. I have a financial package. I have a production package. So you have so many packages which have been given by very many suppliers. So what happens, all my, the maintenance package was concentrating on the quality management, 
they call it as a TQM, a Six Sigma, okay, then a total um, productivity management TPM. There are so many such modules were there. In the projects, you have the PERT project evaluation review techniques, then your critical path methods. You have so many financial packages, okay. In India, we call this as a tally, and then there are so many other financial packages are there. For production, also, we have X, Y, Z. Fine. Everything is working fine, but unfortunately, what happens? They do not talk to each other. The maintenance package says that for maintaining the equipments, I need, say, around $100 million USD. So, to raise this fund, what happens? I have to run from pillar to post and then I have to ask this financial module, can you raise this? So there was no communication at all between these packages. So I, what I thought is I will now better go for integration package. So I bought the integration packages in the market. These are all the integration packages. These integration packages started to integrate things. It started to integrate things and then once when the integration is taking place, I am able to see every module communicating with each other. But again, what happened? My worry has started increasing. Because to maintain these integration packages, I need a trained manpower. Okay, I need, <coughs> what happens? I need extra resources in the form of a hardware and software. So the resources are required. So I am unable to exactly maintain or do all these things. At this time, one second. At this time, till this time, what happens? People were basically optimizing the processes. The process optimization. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi. You know what? Since you have started, actually, I don't understand the word that you said. I need to show you the handwriting as well. I'm really sorry. I just, I cannot understand a word that you said. Please repeat. Please repeat. Yeah, you want me to speak a bit slow? First of all, getting ourselves introduced into ERP, okay? So now we are seeing about how an industry functions. We'll be there will be definitely be going gradually, okay? Just wait for some half an hour, we will be seeing all the concepts of ERP. Okay. Sir, it's just sir, I mean, with all your due your respect, it's just the way you're talking, just I can't understand it. <laughs> what to do? <clears throat> You just wait for some more time. That it will be more, more and more. It will be getting clear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, then I will continue. You just uh, hear it and for some more time and then you see about how the clarity is, okay? So till now, what happens? We were trying to optimize the process. So there was a shift in thinking which started taking place. This shift in thinking has resulted in optimizing the business process. People started optimizing this business process. Okay. 
this business process what exactly it is we are going to see we are going to see this business process let us say in a in a industry we are going to raise a purchase requisition okay your purchase requisition is raised it will be approved by the concerned person once when it is approved it will be going to the purchase officer the purchase officer will raise a request for quotation this is called rfq he will be raising a request for quotation the suppliers will be responding back with the quotation once when the quotation is received it will be processed for a purchase order the purchase order will be received by the supplier the supplier will send the material to the inventory material to inventory so this is in toto a business process it has got so many sub processes and then we can start to optimize all the processes so once when you concentrate on optimizing the business processes the purpose of integration gets solved so instead of optimizing the individual processes you can optimize the whole business processes so this is what the concept of erp started coming in so erp has started concentrating on these futures first of all that for the industry the first thing is it has to identify the demand it will first identify the demand then it will create a demand it will create a demand by good marketing techniques then it will improve the production it will reduce wastages it will reduce wastages <coughs> it will improve the <coughs> shipping networks it will provide the best hr policy the best hr policy will be in place it will provide supplier satisfaction also likewise there will be a number of benefits of a erp the biggest advantage of a erp is basically an end to end e business solution it basically concentrates as suppliers from one end the industry is here and then the customers at the other end so from suppliers to customers it makes a seamless Hello. integration hello yeah so i mean uh is there any is there any way you can uh, write a little really is that okay yeah i am basically writing with a pen uh, which cannot uh, give a better clarity because uh, this is a uh, Uh, not a ordinary rating it's a electronic rating so i'm trying to make it uh, uh, you have to slightly understand oh. it okay? <laughs> okay it's a special tool yeah probably people write in caps you know everything in capital okay <laughs> okay okay i will not try to make it okay. a bigger letter so that what happens it will be more visible for you okay oh, okay 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 that's fine <clears throat> yeah these are the benefits of a erp the erp packages are like this 
now we are going to go for the next topic which is called the manufacturing modes now when you go for an industry industry is going to go for manufacturing there are various manufacturing modes which are available we call this as the manufacturing modes the first one is discrete manufacturing discrete manufacturing here what happens is that you will start your industry at around say 9 am in the morning you will work up to 5 pm you will work up to 5 pm the industries which are basically covered are <coughs> your <coughs> service industries the amc providers okay annual maintenance contract providers your prototype manufacturing industries the prototype manufacturers you will be having a repair shop all these things will be working on a discrete manufacturing mode okay you have the next type of industry called repetitive manufacturing this is repetitive in nature here was what happens there will be a sub assembly manufacturing machine here the the raw material will move from one sub assembly manufacturing to another sub assembly manufacturing unit so this is called basically a line a sub assembly manufacturing units okay this is called line production it is basically called a line production so if you are manufacturing a car the body will be here and afterwards it will be moving over here you will be fixing up the windows you will be fixing up the glass panes and then finally you will be fixing up the engine here and then the finished goods will be coming out so this type of a industry is will be basically continuous it will be basically continuous it will not be stopping it need not necessarily be continuous but it will be normally cost co uh, continuous here the cost of production the cost of production is directly charged into the sub assemblies the cost of production is basically charged into the sub assemblies so this is one sort of a industry where the repetitive manufacturing will be carried out <coughs> you have the third type called flow manufacturing here what happens is that <coughs> this is basically customer responsive as per the customer's requirement you will be changing the things for example i am now manufacturing a monitor with normal screen now the customer says i would like to have a anti glare screen anti glare screen so i will immediately change my assembly lines to suit their requirements the customer's requirements so flow manufacturing is basically flexible in nature you will be having a flexible manufacturing system in place and then it will be doing the requirements so based upon the requirements you will be changing it 
you have one more thing called process manufacturing this process manufacturing will take care of all the continuous process industries here what happens the chemicals the petrochemicals <clears throat> the steel power all these industries will be basically covered under the process manufacturing so oracle has got a separate module called opm opm is a module which will be covering all the process manufacturing we have the fifth method of manufacturing the manufacturing mode is called project manufacturing here you can take up projects from a small scale to a large scale like the ship building the aircraft building and the like it can be any complex nature so these are the only five modes of manufacturing available in the industry as of now oracle in fact supports all the five modules all the five modes basically you will normally have a discrete a repetitive and a process you can find 1 2 and 4 normally available as a combination in any industry if you have a mixed mode of manufacturing this is called mixed mode if you have a mixed mode of manufacturing oracle has got a solution it will be very much possible for you to do the things okay we will be going to the next topic okay. the stocking strategy mm -hmm. so this is regarding manufacturing modes can i go ahead okay uh i had a question i mean uh, what did you say about uh, process management previous one like Yeah, process management. One second, one second. To uh... now, process manufacturing. Actually, process manufacturing is basically uh, one second. See, this is number four is process manufacturing. All the continuous process industries will be covered under the process manufacturing. like the chemicals the petrochemicals the steel the power all the industries which are running 24 hours where the raw materials are charged continuously and then you will be getting the finished goods on a continuous basis so this is basically a continuous industry okay 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 now for the owner the biggest headache for him is the stocking strategy how he is going to stock the finished goods stocking strategy this becomes the biggest headache for him so if we draw a graph if you are going to draw a graph between the time of production and then the complexity of production you draw a graph between the time of production and then the complexity the complexity of production what happens you have the first stocking strategy called mts mts stands for make to stock here what happens is that you will be let us say you are a coca cola manufacturer you will be keeping a very huge amount of stock here 
okay we are going to have one lakh oh sorry it let us say one million okay i will now put one more zero <clears throat> it's one million bottles of stock in your inventory your stocking strategy depends upon the marketing feedback the marketing department is going to give a feedback okay based upon the feedback you may have to have a very excess stock because you don't know at what time there is a very huge requirement the requirement may come in at any time so you may have to keep a very high stock here the complexity of production is less the time of production is also less the complexity and then the time of productions are less then the next type of stocking strategy is pto this is called pick to order <clears throat> this is called pick to order here what happens let us say you are a computer manufacturer you manufacture the main pc you manufacture the monitor you manufacture the keyboard and then you manufacture the mouse so as and when the customer makes an order he will be ordering let us say he is ordering for a pc and then the monitor he is not ordering for a mouse and a keyboard let us say if this is the case what happens this comes under the pto type of manufacturing so here what happens the sub assemblies or otherwise everything will be kept ready all the sub assemblies will be ready and then it will be put as a kit you will be making them as a kit and then you will pack it and then you will ship it so this is the next type of stocking strategy the next one is let us say it's ato this is called assemble to order here what happens you will be keeping all the sub assemblies ready let us say that you are going to have a manufacturing of the cycles let us say so for the cycle what happens the bar the hand bar okay the bar will be made as a sub assembly and then it will be ready okay the uh, rim the wheel all these things will be kept as a sub assemblies in your inventory in your stock okay once when a customer is asking for say around 1000 cycles along with the bell you will pick up these sub assemblies these sub assemblies will go to the manufacturing area called work in process you will make it and then you will bring it to the finished goods stores and afterwards what happens you will be packing it you will ship it to the customers so here in ato type of stocking you will have all the sub assemblies ready in your inventory stores and then upon receipt of the order those things will be taken to the manufacturing area and then assembled again and then come to the finished goods area and then it will go to the customers so this is called ato so these two stocking strategies the ato and pto are called configure to order it is called cto <coughs> okay the next type of stocking strategy is called <coughs> mto this is called mto here what you do is let us say that you are a manufacturer of a furniture let us say office furnitures office furnitures are manufactured by you okay now what happens this is basically a catalog selling you will distribute your catalogs to various dealers and distributors they will show it to various customers and based upon the feedback based upon the feedback you will start to manufacture so what happens in mto the stock will be almost very low stock you will have a very low stock or no stock you will not have any stock otherwise you will be having a very low stock so this will be the case of a mto the next type of stocking strategy is called eto this is called engineer to order <clears throat> here what happens is that 
you will be receiving the order for say turbine let us say that you are going to give an order for turbine once when you order for the turbine what happens the engineering specifications will move from one sub assembly manufacturing unit to another sub assembly manufacturing unit one sub assembly manufacturing unit other other sub assembly manufacturing unit <coughs> here what happens you will be able to do in say let us say 1 million us dollars the cost of production is cost is going to be 1 million usd whereas you are going to sell it okay the sales the sales revenue is going to be say 10 million us dollars in a year you will only do say five turbines you will be making it in five turbines in a year you will manufacture five turbines in a year okay but the margin is really very high but the process is very complex so in an industry what happens you may have any of these stocking strategies follow normally what happens these three you can see the pto ato and mto these type of strategies are very common okay commonly available commonly practiced we can say commonly practiced in an industry so if you have any type of a stocking strategy or if you have a mixed mode they call it as a mixed mode if you have a mixed mode of stocking strategy oracle has got a solution it has got modules to take care of so these modules will take care of any type of stocking strategy whichever you are following okay any questions on this? No, no. Thank you. Now we are going to see about how an industry is going to function. We are going to see a working pattern of a normal industry and then we are discussing about discrete manufacturing. Here what happens, the raw material stores, we will be having a raw material stores. This is called a raw material stores. The suppliers will be supplying the material. These are the suppliers. You will bring it from another inventory organization. You may get it from another sub inventory. We will be seeing what exactly is a sub inventory later on. Okay. You will have a material from sub inventory which is coming up. So this is a raw material store you will be having a thing called <coughs> vendor managed inventory so within our premises the vendors will be keeping a stock of the stores of the materials and then whenever it is required we will consume it by bringing it to our material or otherwise to the work in process area this is called the work in process area so it may even go over here directly. So from the vendor manager stores, it will be coming in and it is well within our battery limits. So naturally, we will be <coughs> keeping it, but we will not pay unless and otherwise we move it to our stores or our work area. So upon the material moving move to the RMS area or the VIP area, <coughs> we will be paying the suppliers. So here, suppliers will be basically maintaining it <coughs> you will be having 
sorry this is not vendor managed this is called consigned inventory i'm sorry consigned inventory you will have one more area called vmi here what happens our stocks are replenished okay our stocks are replenished by supplier he will keep a track of the material which is there and then whenever the materials go below a certain level he will be triggering a replenishment and then he will be making supplies to us so this is basically called vmi this is called vmi so here also the material will be moved to our area or otherwise to the production area <coughs> we say transfer to regular we call this process as transfer to regular whenever we consume the material from vmi stores there will be a small sub inventory this is called <coughs> shop floor sub inventory this is called shop floor sub inventory so material will be basically pushed rather it will be pulled rather you will pull the material with a supply type of op and ap op means operation pull ap means assembly pull <coughs> <coughs> through these two methods <coughs> through these two methods you will be pulling the material into vip area you will also push the material from the raw material stores you will also push the material from raw material stores it will be coming over to the vip area and then it will be manufactured so material or either entering in the area work area through push type or operation pull or assembly pull you will be understanding these three types during manufacturing so they enter into the work area you will manufacture it and then you will take it to the finished goods stores this is the finished goods stores which is available here <coughs> so from there what happens it will be sent to the customers the customers it will be sent to the customers <coughs> okay now you have to optimize the input side the input side has to be optimized for which what happens you have various replenishment techniques one is mm one is rop one is kr one is <coughs> uh, rc and then one is par there are five replenishment techniques which are available for keeping an optimal stock here you will not maintain a minimal stock you will not maintain a maximum stock okay but you will be maintaining an optimal stock you have to maintain an optimal stock so that what happens you will not find any difficulty while there is a problem once when the materials are not supplied unless otherwise you have an optimal stock you will not be able to meet the needs of the industry so you will not maintain minimum you will not maintain maximum but you will maintain optimum so to maintain it what happens you have different replenishment techniques which are available there are five replenishment techniques mm rop kr rc and then par we will be discussing about them in detail during inventory so as of now just understand the names only we will be discussing about it in in depth during inventory similarly for optimizing your finished goods stores you have a module called material requirement planning so this module is going to optimize your finished goods <coughs> let us say that we are in need of uh, let us say the marketing department has uh, given a what's called a a forecast 
a forecast has been given by the marketing department and then it says that during the month of January 07 you will be able to sell around say let us say you will be able to say sir, around 500 monitors monitors are basically produced so 500 monitors you can sell during January so MRP what it will do this MRP module is here this MRP module will be taking the forecast the forecast will be one of the inputs as well as the sales orders which has come from the customers will also be one of the inputs so based upon these two inputs what happens it will explode the requirement this is called MDS master demand schedule the master demand schedule will explode these two things it will accept the input from here or here or it may be hybrid also it may be hybrid <clears throat> so let us say for monitors uh, the monitor has got two components let us say it has got a picture tube it has got a motherboard the picture tube will be having say two more components x and then y this will be having say a and then B so this is basically called a bill this is basically called a bill so this bill will be exploded by MDS MDL will explode the bill and then it will try to find out the requirements the individual requirements will be worked out by MDS so once when the requirement is exploded it will be handing over to the MRP engine it will be handing over to the MRP engine so the MRP engine will <coughs> start to do four processes it will run a demand process in which the MDS is a part of it MDS is going to explode the demand it will now start to run the supply process here all the supplies which are expected from various suppliers will be found third it will do a <coughs> pegging process it will try to peg the supplies against the demand say let us say I need 100 quantities of item A already 400 quantities are about to receive from various suppliers so I will pick this and then finally I will say the net requirement is 600 quantities and these 400 will be reserved will be reserved against this uh, requirement of January 07 during January 2007 we are in need of 500 monitors and then these quantities are getting picked and finally it will be running a process called compile process the compilation results will be given to the management and then it will be giving how much you have to buy and then how much you have to make the make and then the buy <coughs> action activities actions which you have to take will be given to the management the management will finally take an action and then it will do the buying and then making accordingly this is an activity of MRP which is a very powerful planning module it is a very powerful planning module <coughs> this is how an industry works so you have to optimize the input side as well as you have to optimize the output side also so both the activities you have to do then only what happens you will be able to effectively utilize the resources and then you can meet the customer needs Shall we go to the next topic? Any questions here?
ओके modules in oracle we have the following modules as far as distribution is concerned we have inventory module we have purchasing module we have order management module apart from that we have a package called wms it is called varos management system so they contribute to the distribution modules <coughs> we have a set of manufacturing modules it is called bill of materials work in process they are the manufacturing modules you have a set of financial modules <coughs> they are general ledger fixed assets accounts payable accounts receivable and cash management these are the financial modules we have a suit of crm customer relationship modules it has got services it has got contracts it has got installed base likewise there are so many other modules are there you have planning modules you have <coughs> supply chain planning advanced supply chain planning you have capacity planning you have demand planning likewise there are so many planning modules are there in total put together as of now the number of modules has crossed 250 you have so many support modules are there oracle engineering oracle pricing oracle supplier scheduling likewise there are so many such support modules which provide support to the base modules your shop floor scheduling okay likewise there are so many such support modules are available so this many modules are used for <coughs> doing the industrial activity so you have to buy everything is modular in nature any module can be fit and then they will be able to work independently so that is the way oracle is configuring them we are going for the next topic of how a global enterprise structure is going to be
Ja. Please repeat. The time is. Uh, there's two of us who haven't understood you. And there's one guy who said to understand you. This is unbelievable. We gotta work out a way. We gotta find a way to work this out. Okay. Once when I go into modules, I think probably you will be able to understand because now my handwriting may not be clear. Once when I start to explain on the system, I think probably he can pick it up. Just wait for some more time. So what am I supposed to do all the things they explain? Yeah, this gives you an introduction, okay? Once when I go in, you can definitely understand the things. Please wait for some more time, okay? More time, huh? This program is going to run for about a month's time. <coughs> wait, wait, you will definitely understand everything. All right, then. Okay, fine, please wait, okay? Try to listen, understand, and then okay. it will be getting more and more clear after some time. Okay, no problem. You can, uh, you'll be able to integrate all those things, whatever I told once when you go into the subject. Okay, I am now beating around the bush. I am teaching you about what are all the ERP concepts. Once when the concepts are over, we will be entering into the subject. Okay. Okay. Right. We are going to see a global enterprise structure. How you are going to configure a structure in your <coughs> industry. Okay. You are going to have a single database instance. Single database instance. This single database instance is going to sit right on the top. This is the hardware. This hardware is sitting on the top, below which you will be having the business group. BG stands for business group. This business group will be having a classification of human resources. So, these two entities put together will model your corporate headquarters. Okay. It will be modeling your corporate headquarters. The HR classification will try to find out what are all the job profiles. what sort of a job profile is required for running the industry, the skill set which is required. The skill set which is required. So it will identify these two things. Below the business group you will be having a legal entity. You will be having a legal entity. This is called legal entity. This legal entity will be communicating with the business group and it will be having a set of books. It will be having a set of books which will be having C, C and C. This is called chart of accounts. One is currency and one is calendar. 
so chart of accounts currency and calendar are the three constituents of a set of books this is called set of books so the legal entity will be having a set of books below the legal entity you will be having the operating unit you will be having the operating unit this operating unit will take care of all the activities the customers are here the customer will be placing his purchase order this purchase order will be received by the operating unit as a sales order it will be received by the system as a sales order and then order management is a module once when the sales order is received it will be sent to the inventory organization which is below the inventory organization is here so that will be using this it will be manufactured in the inventory organization it will be sent to the customers an inventory organization can be a manufacturing organization it can be a stores it can act as a store it is a manufacturing organization it can be a store or it can be a distribution organization it can be one of the three an inventory organization can be one of the three if we don't have sufficient materials in the inventory organization we will place a purchase order a purchase order will be placed this will be taken care of the po module the purchasing module is called the po module the po module will take care of placing the purchase orders on various suppliers so you will be having a module called accounts payable this module will make a payment to the suppliers and similarly you will be having a module called ar this will receive the cash from the customers this is called ar so accounts receivables and then to have an integration between these two we have a module called cash management so ou will take care of your om your po your ap your ar and then your cash management these five modules will be working at the level of ou they will all be working at the level of ou whereas the fixed asset module will be working at a higher level along with the general ledger so an organization structure will have a business group it will have a legal entity it will have an operating unit and then it will have an inventory organization so these are the four basic constituents of our organization structure so we are going to create these things in our systems and then we will make it workable now so this is the way the hierarchical way of reporting which takes place in an organization now we will now see the role of a consultant okay once when a consultant goes to an industry what exactly he does
a role of a consultant. Let us say you have sold the purchasing module to your end client. So, you are going to have a lot of functions. You will make, raise a requisition, you will approve it, you will place a purchase order, you will receive the material, you will inspect it. Likewise, let us say, you have function 1 to function 500. This many functions are available in your purchasing module. So, the moment you land up in a client's location, what you do is, you will create, you will install the hardware. And then what happens, from the software side, the site will become ready. This is called a site. The site is basically controlled by some profile options. These profile options we will be seeing it a bit later. We have approximately around 10,000 profiles. This many profiles are available for controlling the site, the working of a site. So below which what happens, you will now install our application. In which case, our case it is PO, the purchasing application is being installed. The moment you install it, the values of the profiles will be automatically defaulted over here. Whatever values they are having it, everything will be copied to this module and then the PO application will be controlled by these profiles. You will go into the industry and then you will start to make a study. The first study is, you will be making a as is study. You will make an asset study. You will first of all identify how many of these 500 functions the end client is using. Let us say that he is going to use F1, F5, F15. Likewise, let us say around 200 functions. He is executing it in his normal working. Once when you have identified the functions, you will have to group the functions. Say for example, below this you are finding a group of people who are doing the requisitions. In shop floor, in the shop floor a group of people are raising the requisitions. So they are using say function 1 function 5, function 25 and then function 245. So these functions are executed by a group of people who are there in the shop floor. So you will collect all the relevant functions and then name it as responsibility. So let us say we will call it as RISP1. So RISP1 is nothing but a collection of RISP, collection of functions, collection of similar functions. These similar functions are put on one responsibility. You, you will then find a group of purchase officers. These purchase officers are functioning say function 2, function 5, function 27 okay then function 285 so these collection of functions is say resp2 this is resp1 and this is resp2 
a third group of people are in the inventory they are receiving the materials whenever the purchase order is placed the supplier will supply the material they are going to receive it so let us say function 4 function 1 function 25 and then function some other function so one function can repeat in multiple responsibilities note it down one function can repeat in multiple responsibilities so likewise what happens you will try to find out let us say you have identified 15 responsibilities you have identified the 15 responsibilities which are there in the shop floor that is the team which is working in your client's location can be grouped into such 15 such responsibilities that is what we feel so similar functions are first of all grouped into responsibilities that is why that is what the second activity first function is identify which functions they are doing second activity is group similar functions into responsibilities the third activity is identify the users how many users are there so for every user you will be giving a username and password you will be giving a username and password for every user so this is how you start to begin your activity so once when the user names and passwords are assigned for every user you will attach different responsibility so let us say user 1 is there he is going to do the activity of responsibility 1 responsibility 2 and then responsibility 5 that means this user can work on any of these responsibilities this is how the functioning takes place so you will first of all identify the functions you will create the responsibilities you will create the users and then afterwards you will create employment that is whomsoever or the employees who are using apps that is applications will be configured in the system as employees so once when they are made as employees the employees will be associated to the users <clears throat> so we have a small graph like this you are having the site level below which you will have application 1 you will have application 2 you will have application 3 so multiple applications will be installed below the site below the application you will have responsibility 1 responsibility 2 responsibility 3 and then below the responsibilities you will be having users user 1 user 2 user 3 so it's a four layer architecture you have the site in the top you will have the applications the next layer you will be having the responsibilities in the next layer and finally you will be having the users in the final layer so this is how the system is configured for doing these activities so we are going to see this in the system shall we have a small break for 15 minutes okay okay i am not switching on the VoIP because uh, getting the connectivity is difficult so i will just leave the system as such and then i will be coming in another 15 minutes i will have a cup of tea and come back okay so once when I come back, we will go into the system and then we will start to do the activities. At that time, you will be more clear. You will be crystal clear. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you.
இப்ப தான் போகிறோம் அதே